Oh, look at that. Look at that. There's a new rhizome coming out of, look at that right there. See that? That's the nut. This is my lawn as it stands today. I've been slowly improving it throughout the year. This started the season looking terrible. We're getting better. Right down here, this is not grass. That right there, that is not grass. This is a sedge, nut sedge. It's been cut, it's kind of folded over a little bit. That's not how it normally looks. That right next to it is also a sedge. It's not grass. That is not grass. That is a sedge. Notice that the tips have been cut with a lawnmower at some point. Before we get further into the video, I want you to notice how shiny that leaf is. Let me get my shadow out of the way here. See how the leaf is shiny? So we kind of got that mid vein, but there's still some vertical veins running up and down, almost like a fescue leaf. And if I flip it over to the other side, it's not quite as shiny. But that mid, mid vein is actually raised a little bit. Still shiny, but not like that side. Let's explore some more. Look at all those tall pieces. All of this grass was cut at the same time. But everything tall is most likely a sedge. Sedges grow much faster than grass does. Let's get in close and double check. Yep, that's a sedge. Yep, that's a sedge. Reliably, everything taller than the normal grass is a sedge. As you come over here, this is more of a patch of Kakuya grass as opposed to Bermuda grass, but even still, the blades that are taller are sedges. Sedges are actually very difficult to kill because it's not a grass. Underground, there are what we call nutlets or tubers. The term tubers and nutlets or nuts are essentially interchangeable. They're basically hard little, almost like rocks, attached to the root systems and to the rhizomes that new rhizomes grow out of and new shoots grow out of. If you completely pull a plant out of the ground and the tuber or the nutlet is still underground, it's just going to grow a brand new shoot. As we come over here to my side yard, this looks a little bit sad, but there's actually baby grass growing in here. 13 days ago, I sprayed everything over here with glyphosate because there was a lot of nut sedge growing in this side lawn. All right, let me jump in here real quick. You do not have to spray glyphosate on nut sedge to kill it. There are other ways to do it. The purpose of this video is not to tell you or show you how to kill or control nut sedge in the lawn. The point of this video is about nut sedge identification. If you do have nut sedge in your lawn and you are curious about how to control it, how to deal with it, how to kill it off, there's a variety of techniques that we can use to limit and eventually remove nut sedge from the lawn. This little QR code up here, if you scan it with your phone, if you're watching this on TV, uh, it's going to take you over to my article where I describe how this is done. The link will also be in the description below. Now let's get back into identifying the nut sedge in the lawn so that we know what we need to do if we need to get rid of it. I sprayed it with glyphosate and put down some Kentucky bluegrass seed to get the green to come back. But truly the purpose was to kill off as much of the nut sedge as some of the older Bermuda grass, the common Bermuda grass that was growing here. We've got a good little bit of Kentucky bluegrass coming in everywhere. But even with the glyphosate application, there are some sedges coming back. Remember, this was sprayed 13 days ago with glyphosate. Does that look like it's dying at all? Not to me. See there in the middle, there's new shoots coming up out of the middle, and they come in these little uh, triangular patterns, like one, two, three, one, two, three, and then we've got new ones coming in the middle. So there's some sedges growing there. Here's some more sedges coming back after glyphosate. There's a new baby one there. This one looks a little bit stronger. Notice I cut this one uh, just a couple days ago with my reel mower, so it's growing up. But the one that isn't been cut is a pointy tip. It's a more substantial one. This one didn't get cut because this leaf was laying down. I was using a reel mower. Super pointy tip. Now, if you care, there are two different main kinds of sedges you can find in your lawn. One of them is yellow nut sedge and the other is purple nut sedge. Yellow nut sedge has a super duper pointy tip whereas purple nut sedge has a rounded tip. So that's actually one of the easiest and simplest, fastest ways to tell the difference. 
but I would contend that it doesn't really matter because if it's in the lawn, you deal with both sedges the same exact way and you're not ever really going to not cut your lawn to see the difference because yellow nut sedge grows roughly twice as tall as purple nut sedge and the flower heads for both plants look a little bit different as well. In the lawn, we're never gonna let it get to that point. Over here in this planter bed that we're gonna be putting these chrysanthemums in, I've got a few extra sedge plants that have come up over the past 13 days. Really, they've come up over the past seven days. This is basically, it was bare dirt seven days ago, and now we've got this. Same thing there. These only popped up out of the ground, I would say three days ago. These things grow ultra fast. Now, one of the other ways to identify these is by the stem, way down here at the bottom. So this is leaf material, otherwise known as the shoot. I mean, the whole thing really is a shoot coming off of the tuber. But the stem is way down here. Now, if we look at the stem up close, we'll find that it's got a triangular side. Note the triangular reference that I made before. There's like one, two, three leaves coming up. And then the next growth is one, two, three leaves all coming up in this kind of triangular pattern. If we do a, if we do a clean cut on the base of the stem and look at it like straight up and down, like you're looking at my finger right now, it's going to have a triangular shape. Let me show you. Right, you see that triangle? That's what we're talking about here. There isn't a turf grass out there that's going to come up like a triangle from the stem. All right, now with that having been done, I'm going to go ahead and dig this out. It's basically impossible to grab this and pull it out of the ground and get the tuber out. That's why manually removing these things is virtually impossible. If I were to leave that right there, it might actually just start regrowing right here. But even if it didn't, the tuber underground, the nutlet underground, is going to send out more rhizomes in different directions and then more shoots. That nutlet underground, it's essentially the heart of the plant. I should also say that yellow nut sedge is going to send out a rhizome. And let's say it sends it out to here and then a new nutlet is going to form at the end of the rhizome. And then other rhizomes will come out in all different directions and at the end of each rhizome a new nutlet is going to be formed with purple nut sedge the rhizome is going to come out a nut will form on the rhizome the rhizome will keep going and a nut will form and the rhizome will keep going and a nut will form so it'll be a chain for us yard owners that doesn't really make a difference in my opinion because we're not going to be manually removing these things from our lawn so even though we're not going to be manually removing them, we'll be using a chemical herbicide to get rid of them. I'm going to dig this up to show you what it looks like anyway. You got to be really gentle because the rhizomes and the roots separate themselves from the nut very easily. So to make sure I do it, I'm going to go all the way around. There's my guy. The reason this, this dirt is so soft is because I recently cultivated the whole area about a foot deep and sifted everything for the purpose of planting. But I've left it so that I can get the rest of these uh, sedges and anything else that starts growing up before I start the planting. As gentle as I was, it's still separated down here. All 
all right because it detached from the plant remember this plant didn't exist here two weeks ago it only showed up on top of the soil roughly seven days ago so that part right there was above the ground this went way down into the ground that far was that it's probably like five six inches or so that's how far it is it's like that far into the ground and then below that is the nut and i'm not sure which one of those it is because it detached um, i'd have to rinse those off to find out if one of them is a rock or if they're nutlets but one of those little things right there was the nut that this was attached to if any of those or all of those are nutlets underground each one of those is capable of sending out new uh, rhizomes in different directions and shoots going up above the ground this is why removing them manually with your hand is virtually impossible. Can you imagine doing that for every single nut said plant that I showed you in my main lawn? It's just not possible. All right, I didn't feel like I got the first one up very good. Certainly I couldn't show the nut attached to the plant. So I started working on the second one over here and I'm kind of going at it with a di different tactic. Instead of trying to pull it out, I'm just kind of loosening everything up and letting it fall to the side, kind of gently exposing whatever roots I can find. So you see, I still got it going down here. Look at that. It's putting out a rhizome. See how that's going side to side? It's supposed to the shoot going up. That might actually be it right there. Oh, look at that. Look at that. There's a new rhizome coming out of, look at that right there. See that? That's the nut. Boom, found it. Still detached from the plant, but that's it. I'll set that aside since it's got rhizome out of it. See how big that is in relation to my scissors? In relation to my thumb with my fingernail that I need to trim. I'm going to rinse that off to get the dirt off. Oh. There. that that's a nutlet too still connected I thought I pulled one up but I actually pulled up two that one's actually pretty big Your rhizome coming out roots coming down tuber right there nutlet that is Here's a nutlet that came apart. That's awesome. I got two of them. One fully connected. I could just replant that if I wanted to. Look how deep it was. Ground level was somewhere around right there. Rhizome was about an inch below the ground level. That was another four or five inches lower. 
You can spray this stuff with a handful of different products. The main ones are triclopyr and halosulfuron. There are different reasons why you'd use one of those products over the other. Of course, a non-selective herbicide like a glyphosate would also work. And that's what I've been doing simply because I'm trying to kill off uh, grasses like common Bermuda and common Kikuyu. Even if you were to take glyphosate to this to try to kill it off, glyphosate goes onto the leaf tissue, gets sucked in, and is brought down here. It kind of, uh, we call it translocating down into the underground system. The thing is that these nutlets have so much stored carbohydrates. They're, they're just strong, man. These things are like superhuman, super plants. You can't kill this thing in one go, even with glyphosate. You're going to have to do multiple rounds uh, to effectively kill off a significant portion. Uh, let's call it an infestation of uh, nut grass or sedge grasses, not grasses, I don't want to call it grass, uh, sedges from your lawn. Most commonly, you're going to find sedges coming up out of the lawn from late spring through about the middle part of summer. And then if they're left to go to seed, then in the mid to late summer, they're gonna start growing up tall and putting on those flower heads. Ironically, they're actually harder to kill if we wait to the end of summer, the first part of fall. The best time to kill them is actually kind of in that June, July to early August time frame. They tend to grow in higher densities in wetter environments. So if you've got an area of your lawn that's always a little bit wetter than everywhere else, that's where they're more likely to start showing up in thicker patches. This is a problem for lawn owners that water their lawn a lot, trying to keep it green throughout the summer. So one way of encouraging less sedges to grow in your lawn is to water your lawn during the summer a little bit more efficiently. Up here in the corner, I got a video about how I water my lawn as infrequently as possible during the summer. Make sure to take a look at that next. If you're not going to go, take a look at the links down in the description. The links to learn how to deal with a nutsedge infestation.